Today we're going to look at this area of the capacitor discharging. Here we have a circuit of a capacitor that was initially charged and now it's been connected across a resistor through which it's discharging. We're first going to look at the charge stored on the capacitor, um, how it's changing with time while the capacitor is discharging. And the equation for it is given by this. It's an equation you do not have to remember because it's given on your formula sheet. And what this equation is showing is charge Q that's stored on the capacitor at time T during discharging. Q0 is the initial charge on the capacitor. The E is an exponential to the power of minus T time divided by RC. This equation is showing that the charge stored on the capacitor is decreasing exponentially. So the E for the exponential and the minus sign is telling us it's just decreasing. So we say it follows an exponential decay. Plotting a graph of the charge stored on the capacitor while it's discharging against time t gives you a graph like this, where at time equals zero, we've got an initial charge of q0. And it's showing the exponential decay because this has this unique special feature which is known as a constant ratio property, which is being shown by the dotted lines. And what the constant ratio property means is that for equal increments of time, the charge stored falls by the same ratio, the constant ratio, which is just like the half-life property of radioactive decay, which follows an exponential decay. So if we say this is the first half-life, then in that time, the charge stored will have fallen to half of its initial value. So this represents half of Q0. In the second half-life, the charge stored will have fallen again by another half. So we're left with quarter of Q0. And in the third half-life, in this time, the charge stores will have fallen again by another half, so we're left with an eighth of Q0. The next feature you need to know is the time constant, which is given by the product of the resistance and capacitance in the circuit. So R times C gives us a measurement of time. If we substitute for T equals the time constant into this charge equation, so here the T is now replaced with RC, this will become E to the minus RC divided by RC, so that means E to the minus 1. If you put E to the minus 1 into your calculator, you get 0 0.37. So at the time constant, the charge stored on the capacitor is equal to 0 0.37 of Q0. So it represents the time taken for the charge to reach 37% of its initial value. And if we show that on the graph, 37% of Q0 will represent, corresponds to the time constant RC. Now we're going to look at the voltage across the capacitor. And from previous theory, you should appreciate that that voltage is directly proportional to the charge stored because of the equation Q equals CV. C, the capacitance, is a constant. So the charge stored across the, on the capacitor is directly proportional to the voltage across it. So during discharging, the charge stored follows an exponential decay. So the voltage across the capacitor will follow an exponential decay because of the directly proportional relationship. And to try and get the equation for the voltage across the capacitor, if we look at our charge stored equation, and if we divide each side by C, the capacitance, that now gives us a voltage equation. So we can replace that with V equals V naught E to the power of minus T divided by RC. So this is showing you the voltage across the capacitor at time T, and V naught is the initial voltage. If we now consider the voltage across the resistor, VR, well, if you remember from um, AS, the voltage across the resistor will be the same as the voltage across the capacitor 
classes acting like a battery, so they were across each other. So the, the equation for the voltage across the resistor will be the same equation for the voltage across the capacitor. So it follows the exponential decay. Plotting a graph of the voltage across the capacitor or the voltage across the resistor against time t, it will follow, it will follow similar shape as the charge time graph because of the exponential decay. And again, as a reminder, the expo exponential decay has this constant ratio feature shown by the dotted line. So at equal times, the voltage will fall by equal ratio. And finally, if we look at the current in the circuit, well, from AS again, current we can find using the equation V equals IR. So the current is then the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. As resistance is a constant, then the current in the circuit is directly proportional to the voltage across the resistor. So it, like charge and the voltage across the capacitor, will follow an exponential decay. So if we look at our voltage equation and divide each side by R, V over R represents current. So this will give us our equation for current. So our current at time t, while the capacitor is discharging, is given by this equation, where I naught is the initial current in the circuit. So to summarise, the charge stored on the capacitor while it's discharging and the voltage across the capacitor while it's discharging and the current in the circuit while the capacitor is discharging all follow an exponential decay. I'm now going to prove the exponential decay. You do not need to know this for the syllabus, for the exam, but if you're interested, it's a really elegant proof. So if we start again with our AS definition of current, which is the rate of flow of charge, so our dq, our change in charge while the capacitor is discharging, divided by the time taken. The reason why we have a minus sign is because when time increases, both the current and charge decreases. So to show that mathematically, we need that minus sign. Also from AS, our current is equal to voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. And for a capacitor, we have the equation Q equals CV. And the voltage, remember, across the capacitor is the same as the voltage across the resistor. So we can substitute, eliminate for V in this equation and substitute Q divided by C here. So that becomes Q divided by C divided by R, which simplifies to Q divided by RC. I'm now going to rearrange the equation. I'm going to bring dt up to the other side of the equation. I'm going to bring q to the other side of the equation. And I'm going to bring the minus sign to the other equation. So it's going to look something like this. If we ignore the integration limit, so just a reminder, we've moved dt up to this side of the equation and brought the minus sign over to the other side of the equation as well. And we brought the q down here so it becomes 1 over q so all the q terms are together. We're going to now integrate both sides of the equation so if we look at this side we're going to integrate with respect to time t so our limits will be at time equals 0 our initial time and then to time t and the, on this side of the equation we're going to integrate with respect to q so the corresponding limit so at time zero we have initial charge q naught and at time t we have charge q integrating one over q gives you natural log of q and then with the limits of q and q naught and integrating this side of the equation because there's no t terms we just need to introduce the t here i haven't given the limits of t, t and zero because if we Substitute for zero, that becomes zero, so we're then just left with the limits of t. If we now substitute the, the limits into natural log of q, we get the natural log of q minus natural log of q naught equal to minus t divided by rc. 
Now, if you remember your rules of logs for maths, if you are taking away the na taking away natural logs, you can take the quantities, you can, can combine the quantities together, but you need to divide them. So that will become the natural log of Q divided by Q naught. So I want to make Q now the subject of the equation. So I need to get rid of the natural log from this side. And the opposite of a natural log is an exponential. So by removing the natural log on this side, we get an exponential on the other side of the equation. So it becomes this. So Q divided by Q0 is equal to an exponential to the power of minus T divided by RC. And if we rearrange to make Q the subject, so get rid of the Q0 on this side, we get our equation for the charge stored on a capacitor while it's discharging, showing you the exponential decay.